Hi everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's what is it? It's 8 a.m. here in Bangkok. Can you hear us okay? Yes. One second. Comments in. Ken, thank you for coming out. Well, thank you for staying up and watching. Well, we'll go ahead with our live stream. No matter how many watching, we'll keep the video on. We have some exciting things we prepared. Well, Today will be all about our previous experience in shopping in very expensive, luxurious places like Monte Carlo. Yeah, where we lived for what? A very, very long, long time. time. Yes, we lived there a very long time. <laughs> and yes, we'll, show, we'll share our experience on shopping, on the shops. Um, yes, living, shopping and working, working in yeah. the south of France in one of the most expensive places on this earth monaco and we're going to show you a lot of the videos from that area of us shopping and of us actually some of the things that we got before we were converted into big budget shopping girls so yes we used to fall into this luxury trap <laughs> luxury <laughs> brand trap but no more so Let's start with a little bit of an overview of what Monaco shopping is like. Yeah. So what is it all about in Monaco? So what do you think uh, about the luxury brand and in general the um, atmosphere well, of shopping? Yeah, it's 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 very it sounds very exciting but of course it can be very overwhelming because everywhere you see is just a high end shops brands uh, accessories jewelry it's it's just out there in your face everywhere yes and you feel almost pressured into buying the things just to keep up with everyone else having that latest bag and it's yeah. a little bit of a standard so you couldn't and actually you were forced to it because there's no other kind of shopping well you you have one store zara the the street brand which is zara it's very big mm -hmm. it's uh with a lot of people in there and you end up wearing the same piece of clothing like majority of the people so yeah high, yes. high street brands are not famous in monaco you have a lot of small boutiques uh, scattered all around the place but they are Italian brands um, and they are still very expensive unless you buy something on sale, right? Well, but the reason they're expensive is because it, it, the rental of the space, Monaco, is one of the most expensive places. So yeah. only luxury brands can afford that storefront. So as a result, you end up with, uh, you know, the Landvan, uh, Celine, uh, Chanel, uh, all the usual Gucci, Hermes, this is already... Well, these are the standards. Yeah. And when you come out of the country, you realize that places like Singapore and Hong Kong has a much bigger variety of luxury goods that can afford to go in, in that mall space. So Monaco is very, very limited. So, so shopping-wise, it's very underwhelming. And just to give you an idea how it actually looks, watch this little video right now. Welcome to Monaco, a tiny, tiny municipality. And as you can see, this is what luxury shopping looks like. A private chauffeur, no traffic, no parking problems because you have your own valet. And, well, thousands and thousands and thousands worth of shopping. It's not for everyone. Mind you, a lot of people in Singapore, Hong Kong are just... A manic shoppers as 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 like shown in this clip metropolitan one of our biggest most luxurious malls marble floors beautiful crystal chandeliers lavish furniture so and upscale brands to match it well it hosts around 80 boutiques high-end boutiques well, mostly we did window shopping there and coffee drinking and sandwich eating. Yeah, or shopping on sale for sure. Well, there was not much for, let's say, it's not the kind of place where you'd go for monthly shopping. 
lots of beautiful jewelry and watch stores and they're all located around the casino that's like the center of Monaco so at lunch break I used to just go and look around and window shop eat my sandwich have my coffee and go back to work <laughs> very exciting window shopping yeah and the place is very clean as well so there's no dog food or anything so you feel really oh that's a high standard no dog food <laughs> sure, yes. like a, like a niece in France Wow. Well, this is the, the, the one complex, Monte Carlo One Complex, which was built in 2019 and hosts uh, 24 boutiques, 37 upscale apartments. Um, yeah, so yeah, this is a brand new renovation. It probably took them a very long time, three years? Four years. Four, Four years. years, actually, yes. Wow, Four this years. would have been done in China in six months. So they built very upscale high-end condos. They've demolished the cinema that used to be there. And obviously these shops will gr bring them much more revenue. And the rental of these apartments right in the heart of Monaco are 50,000 euros plus. So it gives you a butler and access to Monte Carlo. Uh, I think the, the spa club. Oh yeah, yes, yes. That's yes, the, yeah, the, the yeah, spa. Maybe. No. no, not the yacht club, the, 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 the swimming pool, the sauna, the massage ben, places. Ben sur mer. Yes. yes. So yes, and here you have the new cluster of all the upscale shops like Celine, Prada, Hermes, Louis Vuitton, Lanvin. Lanvin. Yes. Not a lot of people know Lanvin, I think. This is a famous but, French house. Yeah, but so, it's, it's a very good brand, yes. Lanvin is very popular and very good. How, how exciting was that? Wait, let's see the comments. <laughs> Monaco, my kind of place. Yes, <laughs> this was our kind of place too. It was very beautiful and very, I think uh, you feel exclusive and expensive, but then you kind of feel that maybe you don't a quite fit in because you can't sometimes. keep up. Yes. You just, it's impossible to, to, and at some point you just have to cut the cord. And that's what we did and converted to budget shopping because we just understood that you don't need to keep, well, wow, we with no regrets, at least for me. I don't miss, well, I miss Monaco sometime, but I don't miss that luxurious feeling of that you have to go to shop, that you have to dress up every time to, you know, to leave your home all dolled up with the high heels. And, you know, the sky is the limit there. You can, I mean, doll up and wear crystal dresses and shoes. So and this is a out. visual of what shopping looks like in Monaco. And uh, what's next? We wanted to tell you a little bit more about our experience in high-end brand uh, working environment. Here we have a very experienced Louis Vuitton sales assistant. That How long you worked there? <laughs> well, I worked from 2014 to 2015 in Monaco. I was hired uh, in Louis Vuitton. Well, mainly because I speak Russian and, of course, we had majority of the customers that were Russians. And you were wearing the white gloves when you were showing the bags? Mm -hmm. it, was it was a black gloves? Black glove, yeah. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Just not to leave the fingerprints on these uh, thousand or two thousand dollar bags? Of course. Everything had to be handled with care. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a very great experience. I really enjoyed working for this brand. And um, it offered a lot of different perks for us. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we were getting an allowance to do the manicure because our nails had to be, well, impeccable. Also for some cosmetics, um, they also did um, one week, uh, they, they sent me to Paris to learn about the brand, where it came from, how to... Um, be presentable at work, also the customer service, which was very, very important because when you work for such brands, what is the most important thing is building your connection with a customer that had to be very personal to know what they like, what they don't like. Uh, and um, when you build this connection, you basically um, 
call the customer from time to time to say that we have a new collection. You set aside the sizes when you know that the customer is coming. So it's it's one on one one uh, sure. customer yeah customer service relation and uh, this was very amazing and yeah it was well nice. i will tell you what the biggest perk that i enjoyed as a sister is a privileged i guess uh discounted uh, access to their goods only reserved for the staff and the close family so okay. i really enjoyed that little perk of getting discounted luxury goods so what we had at that time in 2014, we used to get 30% off the main store. So even for the new collection, if you could afford it with a 30% discount, you could buy yourself a bag. That, that's or, still too expensive. That was still too <laughs> expensive. But uh, yeah, at the back end, we, we used to, well, we still have probably, they still have a site um, only for the staff and you could log in only in uh, the changing uh, apartment or you know the room where we used to eat and change. And oh, it, you couldn't access it from home? No. no oh, no, no. wow. It was only built in the system of Louis Vuitton. So, yeah, and that was the site that offered around 70 to 90% off for the staff. So, I can imagine you were but, all at the back room scrolling through the site. <laughs> especially in the morning. You know, we used to have one computer and, I mean, there was a queue of the staff that was waiting to use it. Wow. Because every morning we used to have, like, a different goods and, uh, yeah, everybody were fighting. But mind you, we used to have, like, an allowance of, for the year, around 2,000 euros, 2,500 hundred dollars so you could buy quite a lot of things with that but allowance in one year so if yeah so so i'll show you what i got oh this is one of my favorite bags that i got as a staff allowance <laughs> actually i love it because it's nothing like you see in the store because it's this is material yeah and this is also only for limited time like a limited this collection limited limited edition yes Ooh. It was limited and it's got edition. a beautiful shiny louis vuitton logo so, and actually a lot of people like look at it because it's not your standard louis vuitton thing no you wouldn't find it right now mm. even if you mm. would be looking for it so this bag the original cost at that time was maybe 1000 euros and it's got a beautiful lining inside with the louis vuitton logo yeah and with the staff discount i got it for 100 euros which is just 100 nothing. euros more of those are those bags made in france um yes they, those bags are made in france like belts the leather goods in italy so um at that time yes i'm not sure about now maybe a lot of things made in china well I'd but the materials are still made in in france and italy very interesting very interesting yeah, well, yeah. we miss those days when you were in Louis Vuitton because we got some nice belts and shoes, which oh, it's been quite some time, probably what, 2014? So it must have been over 10 years ago. No, no, well, uh, yes. eight? Yeah, eight years. Eight years. So, yeah, unfortunately, some of the shoes didn't make it since I worn them too much. Well, you have this one no? also here. Oh, yes, I have this one. It's beautiful was also bought with a staff discount maybe before staff what, discount 50 euros 50 euros time. wow yes maybe we should send you back <laughs> <laughs> well louis vuitton yeah louis vuitton is is uh, one of well the biggest luxury brand uh, which the net worth is 46 billion dollars and while well, comparing to for example chanel which is worth only 12.8 billion dollars but still chanel has the most expensive bags i think it's more expensive than louis vuitton but um yeah louis vuitton bags ranging from a thousand dollars for the cheapest one and i can see the comment that yeah the travel bags are very expensive yes they are but for example for the material of canva which will last forever it will never break well unless you damage it but the quality is is amazing you buy a bag and it's it's just for another 10 years 10, well 15 20 years. that is if you want to make that sort of a commitment personally i don't this is i like the fast moving fashion i wear it yes i appreciate it but not enough to spend thousands and thousands on it well i think that for example people invest in the travel you know bags the trunk which cost an enormous amount but it 
it lasts you forever for 100 years and uh, this is something that is nice to have I, I understand with this a small bag and then you just want to change it with a season so i believe you've brought us well i have to tell you that our um kind of shopping preferences differ a little bit i never really bought anything over probably like $200 for me is just not or unless it's on sale but you on the other hand love to shop for uh, at least loved to shop for expensive things and you have quite a little uh, uh, collection of things here to show well yeah a lot of things also got food the friends because i had some friends working for hermes uh, chanel and yes. of course we use that privilege to to buy some things and exchange trade and exchange <laughs> yeah somebody would come to me oh can you get me this bag uh, can you check if it's on sale you know if you have this in in in, in the site so yeah, this is what we used to do, and, and return, uh, that was great. Get, uh, beautiful little perks like here. Oh yeah, yeah. beautiful. So is, yeah, the Chanel shoes, which I would never normally buy myself. I no I, high heels, but we will get to the high heels very soon. We have a very exciting video coming up of our favorite shoe shop that's bursting with shoes that are worth two thousand dollars. Yes. But well, yes, also the classic iconic Chanel bag. Yes, I think these are the kind of things that really are we'll classic. Never, we'll yes. never go out of fashion, and I like to buy such things instead of just buying something seasonal, colorful, that maybe next year will not be in fashion anymore. So these things will always stay there, timeless, iconic, and, then and we have yeah. A little bit here. This is your go-to bag. Oh, this yeah. is a Louis Vuitton probably that withstood, as you said, 10 years and not a yes. scratch on it. This is maybe uh, probably 10 years. Wow, this looks just like new. Yeah. So but this is actually not real leather, right? No, this is Canva. This, the Canva is made from cotton, just many, many layers of cotton. And then it gets pressed. And this is why it's so, well, it's still flexible. It's quite flexible, but it's, yeah, you, you don't have any scratches on it. So this is what and I how, like about the Canva. And if somebody had it damaged or discolored and they bring it into the shop, what do you need to do? Well, is it, it free? No. What? They will never fix it for free. <laughs> I mean, this is a luxury store. How else are they going to make money? <laughs> well, but yeah, but they have, you see, they have the lever details on the side and it had the strap, which I normally don't wear. And the strap is already damaged, of course, and uh, uh, I can buy it separately. But oh yes, the strap. The strap. How will? Manage. How much will that set you off? Well, this I think this simple strap will set you off for three hundred fifty dollars. Three hundred fifty dollars for a strap. But in two thousand fourteen, I do remember it cost around one hundred fifty dollars. So you can see that the prices each year are going up. So don't wait to buy that bag or whatever you want from the luxury stores yeah so it's getting more and more expensive and i know that in asia everything all these luxury brands the prices are between 20 to 30 percent more expensive and also in general you said the prices we've we're gonna also show you a little uh a scroll through video of where we just were you know, scrolling and browsing and window shopping online. Uh, and you notice that the prices went up since then yeah. for ab about what? At least 50%? I think 50%. Uh, well, as you can see, the strap is like, whoa, what, 100% because it used to be 120, 100 euros. And unbelievable. Now it's like, yeah, 300 euros for a, a strap. So that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money, especially when, I mean, at the moment, we love shopping on a budget, especially yeah, so. when something like this will cost you just five dollars or so. No, thank you. Yeah, this dress is also from Vietnam. Yes, it, it is a Fendi cheap, inspiration, Fendi but, inspiration, but, but, but you can and later on we'll play a game of real or fake. So we'll let you guess. So stay tuned. Because as you know, since we moved to Asia, we've converted into buying, uh, you know, we no longer spend money on expensive things, but if we still want them, we'll buy them of high quality copy. Yeah. And there's yes, no shame in that. <laughs> and yes, a lot of Chinese buy the Louis Vuitton. And I remember we had many Chinese uh, shopping uh, 
many, many every day, Japanese, Chinese, and, and the staff is uh, also, we had uh, two Japanese girls, we had French, we had many Russians. So yeah, it's a multi very, very multicultural. Yeah. And you all got along. And I hear you even had little champagne parties. We had champagne parties. We had, especially with the new collections. Um, and VIP clients. VIP clients. Of course, we would be serving uh, champagne for VIP clients. We would be serving coffee for more regular customers. But mm. yeah, it was very relaxed ambience. So when the person comes, you know, the people don't feel pressured. You would always stand on the side, just following the person, not in their eye, like, like in the face. And uh, yeah, so because the shopping in the luxury store is, is an experience. Yes, it's, I, I never really, I, I think uh, I, tr I bought maybe one bag for a friend, but I got no champagne. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I remember I had a customer that um, came to buy, you know, some, some people would just be coming and saying, oh, I'm looking for something for, to buy for my girlfriend, but not too expensive. You know, I'm, my budget is quite small. So you would be just, you know, trying to find maybe a belt or a small scarf, uh, a scarf, uh, a, a, a wallet, like a purse, you know, or to put just the cards and coins. So you would just, you know, help the person because you can see that some people don't feel very comfortable, you know, to, to come to these branded stores with a limited budget. So I even remember that um, one man came and he uh, we chose a belt for his girlfriend. And then he said, oh, maybe I will come with her and then I will gift it, you know, the, the belt in the store. And I said, sure. I said, why don't you come? And, you know, as we serve the champagne. So I said, just come and I will make this, you know, day very special for her and for you. So, yes, I remember they came and, you know, uh, they sat down and, you know, uh, he got the belt and then I got some two glasses of champagne. So, they, I mean, this is the whole experience. Oh, wow. so that was very nice. And, uh, yeah, I was very pleased and uh, that we could offer such a thing. Well, that was an exceptional service. I think that was a memorable moment. And it's all about making that difference. The one thing I really hated is snooty, stuck up salespeople that already knew that you're not going to buy anything. But some yeah. people just like Aww. to come in and, and look around. And this is what I like in Asia, that you can come walk into any store and there will be no judgment. But in France, I think the, the, the sales uh, staff... Uh, I could find them, especially in Paris, a little snooty because they just mm. maybe they just tired of their job. I'm not sure why. But because probably also we, you know, we our culture is different. So we try to to make this experience more pleasant. And if we can do something extra, we will do it. So well, it sounds like you miss your job. <laughs> <laughs> well, next on. Okay, they're very exciting. My favorite, favorite thing on this earth. Prepare yourselves for this beautiful shoe heaven. We miss it. Oh, I miss it so much. The shoes, just look at them, look. Hi everyone, I'm here in Monaco and about to show you my favorite shoe shop that's got the most amazing selection of Italian uh, luxury brands. So, so this was and recorded, was it from two years ago? Pre-pandemic, two years ago. And sandals. I hope I'll get a good video of all of them so you see just we how We didn't really need to wear the mask yet, nothing was happening. These Italian brands are. Some of them are less known than others, like Casa Dei and uh, Lesila. Um, but some of them are legendary, like um, René Calvilla and others, costing literally thousands of euros. They are uh, just top of the line craftsmanship with... Um, and selection is something you've never seen before. If I were to imagine a shoe paradise, that would be it. So this amazing shoe shop that I mentioned to you before, has got um, just an amazing selection and if you were ever passing by um, south of France uh, please make sure you stop by in this um, Monte Carlo uh, Place d'Armes location the shoe shop is just across over there called Fashion Market uh, I'm about to go and show you the selection that they have sale season so it's even better all those shoes costing thousands of euros hundreds of euros uh, will be on sale. So let's go and see. So 
the funny thing is that we lived in a very close proximity to that shoe shop and when the sales were on we'd come by at least every few days just to check out what they put out what further discounts they can do or just just to bring a friend and do another round there's thousands of shoes so every time you come up you notice something new and this is the kind of shoes that ladies in Monaco wear or out to parties these are not walking shoes no these are the kind of uh, uh, private driver kind of shoes and I remember we used to get even bigger discounts as you can see there's a 25 euro sign and yeah we used to, we got some pairs for even 50 or 60 70 euros good quality beautiful designs yes this shoe shop um, we've spent uh, not too much money as you said some of the shoes shoes because um, if you have a large or very small size you could get really good price so I don't think it was spent more than a hundred euros but I probably bought no less than 15 pairs of shoes from that shop I mean these these shoes are mostly the kind of brands um, you don't really hear about much because they're Italian I mean there are some footwear labels whose names you really know like Malnolo Bladni, Christian Louboutin, Jimmy Choo but some of these labels man like Italian labels that you see here like Casa Dei Desila, Rene Calvilla, they are more under the radar. So they work just quietly and diligently in the background and no one's ever even heard of them, especially in North America. Well, I guess you won't so, even see them in the store. So yeah, in that shoe shop that day, I was trying to look for the most expensive shoe that I could find so that's why I went for like something outrageous I kept picking up trying to see how high the price will get because it was thousand one thousand five hundred I was like wow can this get any higher eight thousand dollar shoes snake right they had snake skin they have sparkles they Swarovski had studs I mean yeah right like a diamond in the evening time yes uh, I was told to stop recording but I think they let me get away with as much as they could since I'm a regular customer and pop in and say hello and the ladies know me and then I just said ah what the hell if they can't record I will just keep trying them on that day I must admit I didn't buy anything but this is the most expensive shoe I think I found. No, maybe not. And they have different designs. They have booties, they have like a uh, spadrille, they, they, everything, whatever you want. Sneakers. I think they even have kids. Oh, section. this is the most. 1,600. Wow. Oh, these look amazing. They are so beautiful for any occasion. This is the most expensive, nearly 2000 for a wedge. Oh, these could be the most expensive. Wait. Oh my god, $2,700? Yes. I think I did find it. And, um, some bad news. I've been told to stop recording, so I couldn't quite get all the shoes that I wanted. But I'm hoping there's some good um, footage of the most. Uh, amazing pieces that I started with, which are sandals and high heels, which I love, and platforms and peep toes. Uh, so I didn't quite get the sandals and the wedges and the trainers and the espadrilles and everything else, which is a big shame. I've managed to try and few and sneak in a few pictures uh, in the meantime. Let's uh, go home and see if uh, that footage uh, is of any value and if you can have a good look of just how amazing these brands are. My God, that shoe shop is giving me a, a, a my heart's beating An faster. Anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I wish we could just pop in there and now get a pair of shoes, but or a few pairs of shoes. I'm sure if we would go there now, we'll so, be coming out with lots of bags. Yes, yeah, some of the shoes are still here with me, so I wanted to show you. They're beautiful. Some I've worn quite a bit, so these haven't been worn yet much. You can see they came from that shoe shop and they only cost me, I think, 50 euros because I have a very small foot uh, for European size. It's maybe 35 and a half, 36. Yeah. So this is 36. Yeah, and they made it in, in, so I've been saving these. And then I have lots of other shoes. Wow, these must have, these are Casa Dei, so they have probably originally cost me uh, just 100 euros, but retail price is probably 1,000 beautiful kind of i think this is kind of the oscars red carpet kind of shoe yes some classic shoes little satin wedding style kind of but don't have a wedding yet to go to also barely worn saving these these are beautiful for a special occasions yeah. and the other shoes i've worn quite a bit so they're not very aesthetic to show i guess beautiful colorful designs from also the same shop lesila and cassidy oh yes what else we have here yes these are comfortable they might not look that but they are very comfortable beautiful this, this is snake right little yeah. dancing shoes i got for 20 euros i think only 20 because they had a big big discount so Enough of these shoes. Now, so some comments. some comments. Great product display lens on the camera. Yes, very good. Very. It's. I think it's uh, the the display is 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 really working well. So now that we've shown you a little bit of our real, well, maybe you can show us some of the real Hermes authentic goods also purchased from original shops and it comes with beautiful packaging. I think packaging is very important when you shop in these luxury stores and it's also about the experience opening one, just having it all stacked up in your wardrobe because once you buy this expensive like scarf you want to keep it in the right condition as i could see that one of the comments were about the mold getting when you turn off the air air conditioning in all of these asian countries it becomes very very humid and hot and that humidity affects the clothing leather so yes you have to store everything properly so everything comes in the little pouches i mean this is a belt so a belt buckle comes in a separate pouch. So this would cost around maybe $700 if you buy it in a store. There's another belt. Another I mean, don't they look the same? Belt. One's just a little bigger. That's a Hermes, Hermes belt. And what you were saying they do with the goods that they don't sell? Oh, the Louis Vuitton, for example, they, if they don't, don't sell the bags, if they have an extra stock, they're just going to burn it. They will not go on sale because it's a luxurious brand and they want to stay unique. I mean, what is, uh, what is luxury? It's something that not everyone can afford it. And they want to stay this way. They don't want to go all out and, you know, so everyone can buy it and wear one of their bags. So this is why they're so expensive and they try to keep this level of um, expensive wow. bags. Yeah. So they burn it. They don't even give it to the staff. Well, <laughs> because we know what happens, the staff buy it and then they resell it some of the times. Yeah, for sure. Of course. So what do we have here in this little box? Uh, this is the only time I'll get to unbox a Hermes luxury. Yes, this is a watch. A Hermes watch. We also got so 
I mean, of course, it's beautiful. It's it's nice. And uh, is this bad qu quartz or automatic? It's quartz. It's got a battery in it. Yeah, it has a battery in there. So as far as I'm concerned, all you paid is for a battery and leather band. It is pretty. Don't lose it. It's pretty. <laughs> and what else do we have? And what here? else do we have here? here? Oh, nothing. Here it's we nothing. have a beautiful... Oh, here oh, we so have another packaging for Gucci. Gucci packaging, pretty much same as as the other packaging. Beautiful little scarf. And that little scarf is probably not cheap as well. Well, that's around maybe $750. So this is cashmere and silk, I think. Beautiful. Nice, beautiful. So now we'll play a little game. So who is up for guessing? Real or fake? <laughs> this is the kind of game I, I, I came up with because uh, often the times there is no to little difference as far as I'm concerned. So are you ready? So exhibit number one, and please show in detail in, out, inside. These are Gucci sandals. It has a beautiful logo here. It's got an imprint of Gucci and the beautiful stud at the back that says Gucci made in and Italy. it says made in Italy. It's got leather sole, real or fake. I'm waiting for the answer now. It's fake. How do you know? It's fake. <laughs> So is it fake or is it real? It's fake. Yeah, you're right. I bought it. it uh, I bought it in Vietnam, but it is actually it looks identical to the original Gucci uh, shoe. It says made in Italy and uh, it's got this gold stud. So it's leather. It's exactly the same. I went in the store, but it is fake because it's mine, I guess. <laughs> so now Second up, we have, uh, oh, yes, these are Salvatore Ferragamo. They are tan, leather, beautiful buckle. Uh, what does it say at the back? Oh, you haven't worn them that much. I can see it that. It says Ferragamo here. So real or fake? It's real, I think. Mm. Who said that? Oh. Sorry, it's fake. <laughs> I mean, they were only, I think, $60. Also purchased in this beautiful uh, Vietnam, um, was it uh, Hanoi shop? Because it's so close to China, I think they get really good quality um, shoes and bags and you can touch them. What's next? Oh, so these are Sonia Riquel. I'm not sure if you've heard of this brand. Sonia Riquel is a French uh, designer. And these uh, look like little dancing shoes. Real oh, or fake. Studs. Yeah, beautiful. What is Sonia Riquel is famous for? She's got like st striped colors, striped uh, design clothes. Looks fake. They're real. They're, so as you can <laughs> I see, I bought these in Monte Carlo for a very good price. So yeah, they it, are real. I only paid uh, maybe eighty euros, which is a, a very very low price comparing to astronomical prices. I'm and, so yeah. As you can see, it's really hard to say what is real and what is fake because majority of the stuff they look almost the same. And um, if it's leather, it's really soft and nice. And okay, so. Last thing? Oh, then we'll have so yeah, one more. One, one more. more. These are what? These are Hermes. So you have your standard Hermes buckle and the insole Hermes. And it says uh semi cuir, which means uh semel, which okay. means the sole, leather sole. They're worn a little bit, so so, no way it's real. 
No way it's real. Is it real or not real? So? semi uh -huh, Semi. Um, real. They're fake. Uh, did I buy them? Oh, yes, I bought them in Shanghai. They, actually, the story was my mother wanted to squeeze into a pair of those, but they didn't have her size, and I reluctantly bought it because she loved them so much. I thought it will give her pleasure to see me walk in them, but no, I think it just made her more jealous. <laughs> so now, a few bought bags. Come on, grab one of those little bags here. So this is a big test. No, the, the black one maybe, yes. Real or fake? We have a bag here that is Gucci. A beautiful. These are, I think, from an older collection. So Gucci, metal, fake. It's real. That is the one luxury gift I've accepted from my husband, a beautiful Gucci bag. When he gave it to me, I was shocked and uh, I did threaten to go and exchange it to something uh, or get a refund. Well, I felt really guilty. This is why you never received anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Probably this is why my husband decided. Okay, last thing, real or fake, Chanel. Yes, beautiful Chanel. So oh, real or fake? Real. Oh, I think we might have a little delay have. Oh, never seen the fake Chanel. Really? <laughs> well, you're seeing it one right yes, now. <laughs> it is fake, as fake as it gets. In Shanghai, uh, you can buy these beautiful fake bags and I love them because they get dirty so quickly and I wouldn't want to have the original. I'd feel really guilty. Yeah, the quality is nice, but still it is not perfect. If you, if, if you look closely, the sewing mm. around. But it's... then it didn't cost that much either. I think about a hundred twenty US dollars. So this is my second one. I'm really happy with the Chanel's manufacturing. I'm impressed. I'm gonna keep buying. <laughs> so now we're gonna move on quickly to our one of our little videos that we recorded of us so this is just to give you a little background on these uh, shoe shops that we were at it's uh, I mean Lucila how can you justify thousands and thousands of dollars in cost for a high heel shoe and some of these brands we've never even heard about so Lesila is actually not a very old brand it's only 20 years old and it was started I believe by husband and wife enthusiasm for shoes well I believe all Italians have enthusiasm for shoes so their idea was 10 centimeter heels I mean if you can walk in those you can you you're a hero and to no surprise I found out that Desila has shops nowhere else but Italy, Qatar, and then Russia, Ukraine, Ukraine, and Ukraine. So, I mean, that just tells you where the sales are coming from. Eastern Europe and Italy. And, uh, yeah, bridal shoes. Let's see. 600 euros, 500 euros. Cheap. And then I tried to figure out what's the highest heel that they have. And it's just wedges. So next we have Casa Dei. Actually, that is a very underrated, little known brand. Uh, a lot of celebrities wear the shoes of Casa Dei. And these shoes are known as blade heels. So they're very sharp, very thin heel that they of a blade and that's an old fashioned house actually it started in 1958 just off of Venice so yes you wouldn't turn and a lot of celebrities are wearing them Victoria Beckham etc 
Well, another brand is this, Gianmarco Lorenzi. It's one in the shoe shop as well. As you can see, some Victoria's Secret model wearing those shoes. Um, they have quite an active Instagram account. Also Italian. And this is, I think, one of the most famous and expensive houses, Renia Calvilla. Apparently, the idea originated in the 1930s. And their signature is a coil running along your leg, kind of like a spiral design. That's their signature design of the shoe. Apparently, inspiration came from a Roman bracelet they, they found. Beautiful designs. Again, thousands and thousands of dollars. So we did some scrolling here. They have how do they sell them? If they don't sell them out, I can't believe that they would burn it. So this is the coil design that we talked about. And these are the founders. The third generation, apparently. Three generations. Wow, well, all of them are men. I guess men have very good taste. Okay, oh, so that's the luxury ones. Uh, Chanel, the ones that I showed you is, uh, yeah, well, it's almost uh, 800 euros compared to the Italian ones. That we just showed before. Oh, that's a bargain, actually. It is a bargain. Okay, so these are the bags of Louis Vuitton that are most expensive that you can buy in the store. The capucine of made of crocodile. They are very beautiful, but they're very heavy. Thirty-six thousand. Wow. Thirty-six thousand euros for a crocodile bag. Lizard. I think this one is the lizard one. Yeah, because they do only crocodile and lizard. Well, crocodile, lizard, snakeskin are all very luxurious materials. And uh, yeah, they come under a lot of scrutiny, but fashion houses still um, Make manufacture. Those, yeah. So this is uh, the Alma bag from Louis Vuitton. This is a uh, very famous design, it's popular. This is artsy, quite popular as well. This is capucine. The leather one that will set you for 5,000. And this is uh, Speedy. Speedy is a very famous design and uh, never full as well. And this is the first bags that the majority of the people buy for the first bag. Okay, these are keychains and we thought they're gonna be the cheapest, but no. Some jewelry. So well, here, is... accessories, jewelry, but this is not even high end. And this is the cheapest that I could find in the Louis Vuitton site, which is a bandeau. Okay, Chanel, they do visor for a thousand dollars. Oh, a headband for seven fifty. Anyone? Any takers? And well, the cheapest that I could find on the Chanel site is the eyelash curler. Ooh. Head my shoes. Well, that's the belt that we showed you before. That is not cheap. That is not cheap, no. So, as you can see, I've I've made, given her a challenge to show me what is the, you know, the cheapest thing that you could buy in Louis Vuitton. Well, yeah. What did I, you say? I, you actually, yeah, because I asked her, what do you think is the cheapest thing that you can go just to Louis Vuitton and buy it? What was your guess? Uh, it was a keychain. I thought a keychain would be really the cheapest. No, but the keychains here, yeah, they cost around $500, $600, which is an enormous amount of money. It's not made of gold, is it? No, it's not made of gold. Mm. The fashion jewelry, as we showed before as well, they're not made of gold, but uh, and they what? They are $600, $700, up to $1,000. Uh, I could make one keychain at $600 made of gold for sure here in Thailand, probably. Mm. very likely so so, so yeah. the cheapest one is a piece of cloth which is a, a little ribbon that you can wear on. which you can yeah you, you can wear it on your neck as a, a little uh, like a headscarf or you can wrap put it on your hand yes or, or you can a very it. popular put it on the handles especially of your bag especially here in asia because people you know they like to to wrap the uh the, the handles of the bag so you, they don't get dirty with the humidity with the moisture with the dirt so they like this to accessorize it like this yeah well you see i'm not one of those people that want to wrap my handles in the scarf that's why i'd rather just buy the fake or or well, or not just not own one so 
as we looked, expensive luxury skins, like snake skin, uh, crocodile, and there's a lot of this in Asia, as we know. Crocodile in, uh, is very popular in Thailand. Snake skin, Bali is the, well, Indonesia in general is the biggest snake skin exporter. And Italy is the biggest consumer of snake skin. So they make, as you saw, shoes, bags. And when people say, yes, animal cruelty, I agree, but so is uh, cow leather. So now they actually, you know, farm the snakes and, and crocodiles. And uh, yeah. if you eat chicken, for me, that's also cruelty. Uh, some say for necessity, not vanity. I disagree. Um, but we're not here to discuss what's, uh, you know, ethical or not ethical in a fashion world for, uh, you know, fake or synthetic. There's lots of debate saying that synthetic doesn't, doesn't, doesn't even disintegrate uh, as quickly as real fur and as not as, uh, you know, you know, precious to the owner, so they keep it for a very long time. The one time, yes, we did indulge in snakeskin shopping just because we were so devastated with the prices that we, you know, we just said, ah, what the hell? We'll go to Bali and we'll just shop for a snakeskin bag. And we did. So here is a little video. Wait for it snakeskin shopping in Bali. Oh, 50% off. Yeah. Beautiful. Quality. Cruel but beautiful. Tot. <laughs> Multicolor. This is very nice colors. Yeah. I like the warm. Same price. Yes. 400. 600. 600. This one, new model. Mm -hmm. Just different. Hello. So, so we mean close. No, we didn't have next dog. Oh, okay. Yeah. It should be a little bit shorter. Oh, let's go. Oh, you can make it short. Filled with snakeskin, python, water snake. Uh, they are so popular in Indonesia. Yeah, a full suitcase made of snakeskin. They're not very So you have any pythons in Bali? No, Borneo and Kalimantan is not. Oh, Borneo. Yeah. And the snakes are so plentiful that uh, they farm them we'll and they probably catch them in the wild. And what about uh, a little... This is good to go inside. So the prices were from starting $10 price. for a little while. Uh, here, 100000 100, Yeah, this is here for the cheap for my boss. We have my boss, we have a factory. This is the material, the number one. Design. But one the price, not so expensive. Special. The beautiful imitations of Celine. This is an imitation of Celine design. To go with the... And they have shoes, belts. Even these look everything. These are also. Hmm. It was very exciting to see yeah. something different. We'll have a look. How much are these? Handmade. Uh, 450. Ah, this one. After discount, and 450. Yeah. Yeah, then at this point we realize that you don't really need to strive and buy something so expensive when you can just buy something on a budget. It's handmade, it's local. And one, one bag, and one pair of shoes. Okay. No. <laughs> get a lot of compliments on the bag that you bought you get a lot of compliments on that little, yeah, bag. That little bag the pink bag yes it's still with me um after one year and a half almost two years um and people come up to you saying nice bag would you get it from yes i had a it few. looks expensive looks expensive looks very luxurious um, yeah, but yeah, as you said, it doesn't work very well because the skin, uh, the skin of the snake is not very well, um, 
well fabricated it's very um delicate so yeah and it's losing a little bit of color because here it's very sunny and if you you know walk around in the street in the sun uh, the the color just fades a little humid bit. yes yeah. so I, I will show you the kind of bag that you can make in bali so i decided not just to go out and buy it i decided to personally go to one of these snakeskin shops you walk in the shop and all you see is leathers hung like um like any other leather She's shop in in europe up stacked up in different colors and dyes so what you do is you pick one and then make one so more more about this in our next video because we will go into more detail about asia our experience and making crafts um shopping handmade asia, goods yes. so but this is just to give you an example of what kind of bag you can make in bali and it will cost you very very little and it's a big bag and i walked into some famous you know shops and i'd get compliments saying oh nice bag what brand is this this is made by julia kind of brand yeah you kind of you, you can design Beautiful. it yourself you can draw you can just put whatever you want the buckles mm. uh, to make uh, the straps as long as you want and then just make it so all of these straps and buckles and chains and handles i had to purchase in advance in bangkok they have a big area which will be covered in our next live stream and yes we have Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. This was a great live stream. We covered quite a lot. Well, um, we covered, we showed you, we shared our experience uh, of luxury shopping, of Bali shopping. Um, well, this was our past of designer things and our mono Monaco shopping. And um, now that we're in Asia, we're shopping and uh, yeah, we're really a completely the different uh, mindset. And so here you can make tailored clothes and you can make your own bags and shoes and belts. And you can, if you're still craving for that designer piece, you can buy a very good, almost like genuine copy in China, uh, which um, I'm happy to do because uh, now the price is inflated so much that they've even become more expensive than before. Yes. So Absolutely now right. we're more into budget shopping just because we can see that in Europe, you all they do is manufacture in Asia and bring it back and charge tenfold. So the same factories are manufacturing other clothing and accessories and they just sell it here for much, much, much cheaper. Mm. And the quality is still good. And uh, yeah, we, we just love it. We love shopping on the budget. So... Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Um, thank you for watching. Subscribe. Staying up. And we'll keep this video up for later. Bye, everyone.